101 goes north, Gaviota, is the other side of the Gaviota Coast. Three quarters of the Gaviota Coast is not accessible to the public, and that is because you go through the Hollister Ranch from Gaviota to Point Conception. This is the Hollister Ranch. Gaviota to Point Conception, that's the Hollister Ranch. Then the Bixby Ranch from Point Conception over here to where the yellow begins on the map, and that's Halama Beach. You can see it right here. That's the Bixby Ranch. And then the whole yellow area on the map, that's Vandenberg Air Force Base. So I'm going to be kind of dividing the talk up into uh, four sections. Now, the original, uh, part, the part of the Gaviota Coast that you see right now, this open section, <coughs> of course, has all the state beaches. Now, we went through Carpinteria, uh, we went by Summerland and uh, Santa Barbara Beach. We're going to go by three more state beaches, El Capitan, Refugio, and Gaviota. All these state beaches are basically since the 1950s. Up until then, this whole area along here used to be oil wells. Now look at Santa Barbara. You see where Santa Barbara is? It's not really here on the coast. No, it's back here. This is what gives Santa Barbara this Mediterranean climate. Santa Barbara actually has less fog, less wind, much nicer weather than most of the other coastal cities in California because it's set back, and it's set back here in the Santa Barbara Channel. Look at this, look at this map. You know what you're doing now? You're running west. This is the only section of the coastline between Alaska and Cape Horn that runs east and west, which creates a very interesting scenario here because first of all, you have the Santa Barbara Channel over here, and you have some conditions, and I'll tell you about them, that create the most productive ecosystem offshore of any area in the North American continent. I'll be coming up to that. But right now, let's focus on Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara is way back over here at the uh, end of the uh, Gaviota Coast, which uh, gives these sand beaches mainly because of the oil wells. There are 400 oil wells offshore. They actually started putting oil wells in this area back in the uh, about the 1850s. So the oil went in a long time ago. Well, the oil wells that were onshore were not really very productive. 600 oil wells could only produce about 400 barrels a day. Well, as the technology improved, they sent the oil offshore. And you saw those rigs out there in the channel. Okay, they put in 23 oil rigs. Those 23 oil rigs could pump 18,500 barrels a day. So obviously they didn't need the onshore wells, so they started dismantling them. And when they did, they make all, made all of this area state parks and beaches. Now, the oil uh, wells actually extended down to Summerlin. Anybody familiar with Summerlin, by the way? Okay, you are. <laughs> For those of you that are not, <laughs> Summerlin, at one time, up until recently, used to be the nude beach. And uh, we used to point it out. Uh, the only problem is there's a curve right over there. And every time that we pointed it out, everybody would rush over to this side of the train to try to get a peek. And the train, we were always afraid the train would tip over on the next curve. <laughs> so we stopped talking about it. Well, since then, it uh, has uh, become uh, non-nude, so to speak. So uh, it's basically just one of the regular state beaches, but uh, it had quite a, a, a spell there for a while. Well, ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? This is a <laughs> I have to wait for the talk, so I gotta shut up. Whenever they make announcements, I have to be quiet. The dining car is now closed for lunch. Okay, so uh, you have Summerland on that end, and you have Gaviota on this end. So now we have three state beaches. We have El Capitan, which will be the first beach, Refugio, which will be the second beach, and Gaviota, which will be the third beach. And I'll point these out to you. Uh, the only problem with the Gaviota Coast is that even though it theoretically provides access to the public, in actuality, how are you going to get over to the beaches? Well, Highway 101, there's no parking lots along here. The trains don't stop. The only access that the general public has are the three state beaches. However, I'm going to show you a little secret. There is a connecting point between the first two beaches, and it's a bicycle path. Now, very, it's really amazing. These are state beaches, and in the state brochures, they don't say anything about that bicycle path. Nobody knows about it. But it connects the two beaches, and it goes right along the cliffs. And it's the best access point that you have to all these secret little coves that are along the shore here. Now, we go here along here in the summertime, and I can tell you, you won't see anybody there today. You won't see anybody there on the 4th of July. It's just one of those really crazy things. It's a big secret, and nobody seems to know about it. And I'll show it to you. And if you ever want to come up here, all you got to do is go to either one of those state beaches, 
and use that bicycle pass and you can get away from all the crowds and you'll have your own private little beach and I'll show you where it is. <coughs> so that'll be coming up between El Capitan and Refugio. And then we'll see Gaviota and then of course we'll go into the house to rent. So there is, uh, there is access to the coast here. Now, uh, as I said before, this used to be all oil wells. Well, when the oil got sent offshore, uh, of course, you know, the technology improved. But the problem was that the technology in those days was not very environmentally friendly. And what happened was those oil wells leaked, and they leaked a lot. And one of them actually blew out over there by Ventura back in 1969 and uh, spilled three and a half million barrels of oil into the Santa Barbara Channel. Now that was the single uh, most important disaster of the 1960s that really sparked the environmental revolution of the 1970s. And that's because for the first time, <coughs> we had television here covering a major event that was very lividly bringing into everybody's living room a very you know, dreary picture of all the dead sea life coming out of the channel and all of these oil-soaked waves coming up on these beautiful Now at Point Conception, you're going to see four oil wells right offshore there. Those are new oil wells. They were put in about five years ago. And the idea was, since the oil companies knew that this area had dried up, so what they wanted to do is they wanted to uh, build a string of oil wells starting at Point Conception and going all the way up north to San Luis Obispo. So they put in these four. You'll see them there. Well, once the uh, fourth one got built, the state of California stepped in because the state of California rem reminiscent of the old uh, 1969 spill, and believe me, it's still very vivid here in uh, Southern California, uh, decided that they did not, the state did not want these oil wells. So they went uh, to court because the federal government had control over the issuance of the leases. And uh, they took the federal government to court, and the court sided with the state of California saying, yes, the state should have some say in what goes on anymore. The plan was to send them all the way up the coast. That has been canceled. So you will see the four that were there. Well, everybody says, well, what are we gonna do about the oil crisis? We need oil. The problem here is that the oil that comes out of the Santa Barbara Channel is not good oil. It's not only they dirtied the channel, then they cleaned it up, and now they're leaving. So <laughs> it's kind of an interesting scenario how this whole thing turned out. Uh, what we're going to uh, see, of course, is this beautiful Santa Barbara Channel now. And I did tell you that this was the most productive ecosystem on the entire uh, North American continent. Let me tell you why. First of all, you have clean water here. Now, you have to have clean water if you're going to have a good ecosystem. You have clean water because you don't have the sewage disposal air, uh, problems that Southern California normally has. When you go south of Ventura, you're going to see all of the cities were constructed along the coast, and they empty all of their sewers into the oceans at the state beaches unfiltered. So whenever there's a rain, all of that stuff that's in the gutters, you know, like uh, McDonald's wrappings, dog droppings, uh, human droppings, uh, uh, grease from your car, all of that gets sent to the oceans unfiltered by way of the state beaches. So you never want to go swimming in a, a state beach in Southern California after the rain. I don't do it anymore anyway, because the last four times that I went swimming, I started getting these sinus infections, and my doctor told me it was some bacteria in the water. You don't have that up here. First of all, Santa Barbara pipes their sewer disposal out two miles. You don't have pesticide runoff because there's no farming over here. So what you have is a starting off with clean water. And you have clean water because you have these currents going along here. Now, when you look out there and you see that, that haze out there, well, of course, that's partially fog. When you see fog, you know you have a healthy ocean. Because when these currents are moving, what they're doing is they're turning, they're churning. This churning is called upwelling. And when you're upwelling, you're bringing cold water to the, uh, from the bottom up to the surface. When it's upwelling, it's bringing nutrients to the surface also. Because when things die in the ocean, they go to the bottom. And when that uh, ocean starts to turn and churn and bring that stuff up, brings up the cold water, it brings up all the nutrients with it. So when you're seeing the fog, what you're seeing is a healthy ocean because the ocean is churning. So that's what we've got here. We've got a pretty healthy ocean. Now, um, I can remember back in 1997 when we had the El Nino. When we had the El Nino, you could see Hawaii. It was so clear. But that was because the ocean currents had risen and of course it had uh, slowed down that whole process and the ocean stopped churning. The, the El Nino has a devastating impact on these uh, coastal areas and of course the whole down the coast. And this is called the